In Iowa's first congressional district debate, it was the incumbent versus the challenger, maybe the only time they're going to debate. We're going to take an extended listen about what we learned. For the next hour, we will explore the views of two women who are running to represent Iowa's new first congressional district. This might be the only time these two sit down together before Election Day. How do you uh, plan to work across uh, and listen to different voters who may not have the same political opinions as you if you're elected? This new first district is a lot of rural, but it's politically purple with Republicans, Democrats and no party registrations all within about 2 percent of each other. We travel a lot in Iowa and the incumbent knows it. Uh, our office has an open door policy for people from Iowa. When someone from Iowa is coming to Washington, D.C., I make uh, extraordinary efforts to be able to meet with them. We fight like enemies instead of fighting like family. I think people want to get past that. Her challenger knows this, too. One of the things I've been such a strong supporter of as a law professor has been free speech. And I really talked to have educated a lot of students about the importance of listening to people who have different opinions than your own and the importance of protecting uh, that speech so that we can have, you know, the, those different debates. There is no debate that inflation has raged since COVID-19 struck. What is one thing, one policy idea that you think would help tamp down inflation? Higher energy costs have been a major force for the price hikes and the reasons behind them fueled this disagreement. One of the things we absolutely have to do is to hold uh, the oil and gas industry accountable for corporate price gouging. Marionette Miller Meeks was not buying. So are gas prices down because the gas companies are no longer price gouging and why wouldn't they price gouge now if they were price gouging earlier? The price of college costs thousands of Iowa families long after students graduate. President Joe Biden plans to forgive up to $20,000 of those student loans. President Biden took steps to ease the debt load for college students who acquired loans <clears throat> while they were in college. Similarly, like she did at a different moment in this debate, when Christina Bohannon said the Democrats don't pay enough attention to the record numbers of apprehensions of migrants at the southern border, she distanced herself with some in her party this way. I will say, though, that I think that the approach that the Biden administration took uh, was, was too much and maybe could have been more targeted. Miller Meek says a college degree is not what it once was, and she proposed that a college should take on some more risk for a student's future. To make schools partly responsible for school loans and if there's a default on a college loan, uh, which then makes the college have some skin in the game. When or if abortion remains legal has become a more prominent issue than it's been in decades with more voters. And that issue brought the most prolonged disagreement between these two candidates. And it's not the extreme position of what we were also asked to uh, support, which uh, almost every single Democrat in the House supported, and that was abortion on demand up until the time of birth and even after birth, which is an extreme radical position, which is not supported by the majority of Americans. There's also a back and forth between these two that is unlike any other moment of this debate. So we're going to let this play out for a while. This whole thing about abortion on demand until the day of birth or after birth, I don't even know what that means. Um, you know, the fact is that I don't support that and I don't know anyone who does. Um, Marionette Miller Meeks is not telling the truth when she says that this has been her position all along. The fact is that she has sponsored not one but two nationwide abortion bans, one of which is called a life at conception bill, which bans all abortions from the moment of conception with no exceptions at all, including not for rape, incest or to save the life of the mother. She sponsored that bill. And then she now has also signed onto a second nationwide abortion bill, uh, this 15 week bill. And it is one of the worst examples of government overreach that we have seen in a very, very long time. It inserts politicians into the most private, personal aspects of a person's life. And for someone who talks a lot about unnecessary government overreach, she has sure signed on to some pretty terrible bills involving government I, I overreach. I think what is extreme and terrible are all of the House Democrats voting for a bill that would pro permit abortion up until the time of birth. That's what they voted for, all of the Democrats. Acknowledging that life begins at conception as a scientist and a doctor, you can acknowledge when life begins, but also 
have an uh, abortion with uh, restrictions, but that there is uh, life of the mother, exceptions for life of the mother, exceptions for rape, and exceptions for incest. Up next, Chuck Grassley's response when asked why politicians can't work together better.